anyone can make a leotard <laughs> with practice. So get your fabric and I'm gonna show you how. Once I was at a meet and a bigger brand told me, good luck, insinuating that I'd never be good enough. Well, I think this video shows a lot. Girl, I may not be big yet, but my quality is top notch. So the easy part was cutting out the patterns and now my favorite, switching out the threads. Now with right sides together, you're gonna stitch them up. Also, can I just add, the lady who made this comment to me doesn't even make her leotards. Okay, so look, right here, I'm gonna show you a trick. And because I'm self-taught, it took me a while to realize this, but it makes so much sense. Once you're done sewing the side, only go a couple stitches off of the fabric. Side note, I have a gusset because my fabric is kind of thin. So if you also have a gusset, it's gonna be wrong side to right side of the gusset to the back of the leotard. And then here's where I bring the front together. So you'll have three pieces to sew. Now, here's the genius tip. You're going to put that under your foot and keep sewing. What I was doing is sewing the side seam, taking it off, cutting it, sewing the crotch, taking it off, cutting it, sewing the side seam, taking it off, cutting it. Oh, it's a tongue twister, let alone a lot of work. Sorry for yelling, I got worked up. By doing it this way, you're saving so much time. And then you just cut them apart once you're done. My favorite part about making a cami leotard is the only elastic that you need are for the legs. And once you have them cut out, you're gonna sew the ends together. Now it's time to attach the elastic to the legs. Please, 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 please don't get frustrated with this part. It is a little difficult, but consistent practice will help. Where I sewed the elastic, I put that behind the crotch seam. Now, if we think about this logically, the back part is gonna have less elastic than the front part. So more elastic needs to be in front than in the back. So first I just stretch the elastic so that I know where halfway is. Then I'm gonna bring my fingers inward on the bottom elastic because that's going on the back, which we know needs less elastic. Here is where we test the ratio fabric to elastic. Basically, you don't want too much elastic in the back or too little in the front because then it'll be wonky and feel weird and not be comfortable. So go ahead and pinch each side where the pin is. Now, just like a rubber band, when you stretch it, it gets thinner, right? You want that thinness to be equal in the front and in the back. So when I was doing this, I thought the back was stretching out way too much than the front, so I put more elastic in the back. And then I tried it again, so I stretched it. Just take a look of how much that thins out and then go to the front, stretch it, see how much that thins out. I feel like they are pretty equal. And let's be real, long as you get as close as you can, no one's gonna be able to tell. Now I'm gonna do the other side and I'm not gonna edit this shot at all so that you can fully see exactly what it is that I do. If you feel confident with this part, move on to four minutes and 23 seconds. I just got done pinning the elastic behind the crotch seam. Now we need to measure out how much elastic will go in the front and in the back. Slightly pull the elastic so you can find the middle. Then bring your fingers inward on the bottom elastic because less elastic is going in the back. You're gonna put that spot on the side seam and then pinch each side so that you can stretch it out. Here is where you're gonna see how much the elastic thins out. So the back, it's thinning out a lot. Now the front right here, it's not thinning out at all. It's staying practically the same width which tells us there's a lot of elastic in the front and not enough in the back. And you can really see this when I flip from the front to the back. So let's fix that. Scoochy scooch more elastic to the back. Now we're gonna test it again. Stretch it and see how much it thins out and then compare to the front. It is a lot better. Now put a pin in it and that part is done. The next step is to sew the elastic to the leotard. I start sewing where the pin is at the crotch seam. And don't forget to remove your pins before you sew. First, make sure your needle is down, then with your left hand, grab the other pin, stretch it out so that the elastic and the fabric are even. Then with your right hand, you're going to pinch the elastic and the fabric together. Then you're gonna let go with your left hand because you need that hand to guide when you're sewing. But don't let go of your right hand, keep pinching. Now, just make sure your elastic and your fabric are all even. They line up and they're ready to be sewn together. As you start to sew, the left hand is gonna guide and then the right hand is actually gonna keep pulling the elastic so that it's even with the fabric. So think of it like this, your right hand is pulling back, so your left hand is gonna have to push forward a little bit to counteract the pulling back. 
Just like attaching the elastic, sewing the elastic, it can take some work. So one more time, grab the pin with your left hand, pull it back with your left hand, make sure the elastic and the fabric are even, pinch with your right hand, and as you continue to pull with your right hand so that the elastic and the fabric are even while you sew, you're going to guide with your left hand. And you can see here that I use my left thumb to situate the fabric so that it continues to be even with the elastic. I know some of you may want to watch me sew the entire leg hole, so I'm going to keep that here unedited. If you don't need to see that, move on to 555. The elastic is now surged on and it's just downhill. No, it's not downhill from here. There's, it will get maybe a little harder. But as of right now, it's gonna get easier. Fold over the elastic so you can do the top stitching. If you don't have a cover stitch, you can always use a zigzag. When doing the top stitching, you wanna pull the elastic in the fabric so all the wrinkles are gone and then you'll sew. Now, I have another tip for you. This is how you can tell if you're getting really good. Do you see how the top stitching causes this gathering? If those little wavy gathers are perpendicular to the edge of the fabric, you're doing really good. Now this is how you make sure they're like that. With your left hand, you're gonna pull the fabric outward while also going at the same speed as the foot forward. This little trick takes some getting used to, but it's definitely a little detail that makes the leotard look better. Now that that's finished, it's time to do the binding. My attachment calls for one inch and three eighths. To be honest, I'm not sure a brother has a binding attachment, but I just did this and I put duct tape on it. it. It works for me. On your strip of fabric, you're gonna cut a little point so that it's easier to put it through the binding attachment. And I just use tweezers to fish it through. This attachment is not a double fold, it's just a single fold. So once I get it through, I just make sure it creases in the middle and then I put it under the needle. First, you're gonna start with the neck. With my tweeter, tweeters, <laughs> with my tweeters, I put it in the crease. And then I'll pull on it from behind just to get it started. Here comes another tricky part. In order to do the same effect as the legs, we need to slightly pull on the binding. This will create gathers so then the leotard will fit properly. You can also try weaving it through the attachment. That could work better for you. This is just what works best for me. All right, you ready for another time saver? It's a good one. First, stop pulling on the binding. Now, just keep sewing. Just keep sewing, just keep sewing. I am now currently making the strap. So instead of cutting the neck part off and then redoing everything, you just keep sewing because then now, look, here we go. We're cutting off the neck part. And now we already started our first strap, which is what is next. Ooh, look at that, it's so beautiful. Now since we already have our strap done because we were working smarter, we just take our tweeters again and do it all over. How awesome is it that we better, better even know each other and we already have an inside joke, tweeters. That's our inside joke. <laughs> oh. Anyways, I think the most difficult part is being able to use both your hands at the same time. A lot of times it's like you need a third hand, which sucks because, you know, you can't have a third hand. So just remember, practice, practice, practice. Now you can keep watching me sew this part or you can jump to 9 minutes and 45 seconds to continue. We are almost done. Here's the part that we are gonna finish our other strap. So you're gonna sew, sew, and then you're just gonna keep sewing. Also, don't forget to stop pulling on the binding because we don't need gathers on the straps. 
The next step is to measure your straps and cut them. Now find your straps and you're gonna pin them to the back of the leotard, on the inside of course. I mean, unless you want them on the outside and that's your thing. Now I have a tag on the outside of my leotard, so. Now it's time for the last step. And honestly, if you're still watching, you might as well subscribe. You like that plug? That was a good plug. So when I sew my straps, I have a top layer and then a bottom layer. And when I sew them, I never really cut the thread. I just move on to the next strap, which another time saver. So here I moved on to the bottom layer. I'm just sewing and then I move on to the next strap and then I'm done. You already know I'm gonna show you the final result. If you have any questions at all, just leave a comment. I mean, we're practically besties now, so I'd be more than happy to help you out.